Hello. So my name is Lee Gibson Grant. Um, I've worked around blockchain technology projects since 2013. I actually started off uh, in the city of Ternopil in Ukraine. I was residing at the moment in time. Over this period, I have been experimenting with blockchain technology uh, in different countries, different environments. What I've experienced this may sound far-fetched, what is going to be proposed now, but this is the first time I'm actually going public. And also some of the partners are here. So very soon, we're going to have an industrial revolution. We've got the Internet of Things, Industrial IoT, which is Industry 4.0. We have the blockchain. We have AI technology. But the next question is, where does technology stand? So when we look at blockchain, so we just go from eight years, 2009 it was created, 2013, $15 billion valuation, 2016, $1.1 $1 .1 billion invested more than the internet. Then 2017, because of all these new technologies, AI, blockchain, IoT, is now becoming a shortage in developers which can actually work in these fields. Solution. Every project I've gone into, Namibia, South Africa, Greece, I was basically told it's not possible. This is my answer. If you don't understand it, basically what it means is I'd rather fail big opposed to failing at all. So everything around IoT, AI, blockchain comes to one, works around one area. And many people seem to forget actually how the internet survives. It survives on infrastructure, telecoms companies, data centers. We then also forget how to financially and innovate inclusion on many levels. When I mean on many levels, I don't mean about here in Moldova, as actually you've got 4G coverage, which is very fast. Many people have Wi-Fi at home across Europe. But actually, when we actually talk about changing the world, the most common places which don't have financial inclusion, education, do not have communications infrastructure. Therefore, they don't have a mobile phone network. They do not have internet. So why have I chosen Moldova? There's going to be a few reasons which will be coming out very shortly. But here in Moldova, it's a perfect place for testing technology and to export to other countries. So now let's get to the cryptocurrency side. Whilst we have Bitcoin, it has billions of dollars in market cap, people mainly trade it. They don't really use it for purchasing items, it's trading value, commodity. So, but what if we can actually tokenize infrastructure? So some of the largest areas uh, when you go to Africa, you find villages which do not have infrastructure because the telcos think it's not profitable. So could we actually tokenize infrastructure and put specific services into those areas, enabling microeconomies, creating ideas and intellectual stimulation? To make inclusion on many levels, we must think completely outside the box and completely against the normal thinking. So I have two little currencies, which I have one which is called GEO token, which in Indian means life, live, and DT token. So DT stands for distributed technology. The DT token, I use that in my little projects for testings, uh, finding new ideas, new projects. And the GEO, I created that to support an ecosystem for tourism. 
So we have a platform which has 800,000 hotels, 900 airlines, uh, discounts from Lenovo, Dell, WWE, Coca-Cola, the list goes on. The idea of the token is for people to market tourism, earn tokens which they can then spend back in the ecosystem. One problem, they didn't spend the currency, they prefer to trade it. So the ecosystem falls down. So you have to go back to cash, because cash is king. So the project, which we're doing here in Moldova, has three different elements. DTX, which will be the issuer of a currency which is offering dividends. So every person who's an owner of the token is a stakeholder. That is then linked to Aqua Telecoms and the Aqua Telebank. So the partner on Aqua Telecoms is Accent Group from Moldova, who installs infrastructure, builds buildings, Accent Electronics. And on the other side is DM Communications. Now DM Communications is an independent roaming network. I use it when I travel, obviously, because I make my own prices for my calls, my internet, my SMSs. We are in 206 countries of coverage, over 360 mobile networks which we're interconnected with. The advantage of the partnership with XN Group is there is already 1,500 kilometers, which you can see here, which has a, a PVC pipe which will house five new fiber optics. The next stage of the project is another 1,000 kilometers. Now, why am I focusing on a PVC pipe and not code? Because you need to have infrastructure. So also part of the project is an e-learning for all schools, people at home. They need fast internet. Now when we're moving into smart cities, AI and blockchain, we also need infrastructure. So what if you can tokenize this infrastructure to raise the money to complete, complete the project, build further, but provide a network which can service IoT, industrial IoT. Now, Moldova has Chinese people, Chinese companies coming here to invest. Well, Chinese companies and Japanese companies, they like smart technology. They like IoT. Who is going to actually service them? Will Orange service them? Will Moldova service them? No, because these are internal networks to their factory. So they still need fast internet. Aquatelebank. Grubix is a product which is a hybrid blockchain platform. The underlying platform to this, which we've rebranded to make Grubix, has 150 of the biggest banks, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Credit Suisse. Now I'll go a little bit more into that further down on the other slide. Accent Group, Drag My Money. So we've been building mobile wallets for the unbanked, for Africa. But we were doing it very different. We were using the blockchain to secure each transaction. So every transaction, whether it was an SMS, QR code, would go over the blockchain. But we now have Enfino, and one of the uh, representatives is sitting over there. We've been visiting the banks here in Moldova, and it's been received with a very good response. Enfino is a Silicon Valley company, and millions, tens and tens of millions have gone into building their mobile money bank platform. So. We scrapped what we were building because we would never be able to compete. And the product is very agile. This is the customers of Enfino. You may know, some of them may not. So there's microfinance companies, telcos, banks, 
So when you have a collaboration with a company like this, it's better to collaborate, partner, develop alongside them, opposed to trying to build a competitive product. This is the backbone of their platform. This is what we, as two slides in our presentations to the banks these days, we only showed this slide and this slide, and a 12 minute video, so they could see how a user would use the application, how the bank, the, our IT section would use it, and the response has been very, very big. Now you also will see blockchain and cryptocurrency. So just because we scrapped building our mobile bank, what we're doing is we're taking the technology of blockchain, permission technology we've been building for the past year and a half, which is also built by some engineers which come from a very large bank in America, financial services and telecoms people. Now, this is the Grubix product. As I said, there's 150 big banks been using it since before Bitcoin even existed. The problem is, nobody really realized what there is. We, we were doing some work in Greece and in Namibia, and we realized, hang on a minute, this is a private network. This is a hybrid blockchain product. Normally, this product is used to secure your phone calls, because the finance industry they must keep their phone calls for a certain period of time to protect their clients and themselves. But we actually changed it. We can now store digital documents, seal them, timestamp them, and we can work with any blockchain. And we can stay within the jurisdictional control requirements, regulation compliance, so this is another product which is inside the project of DTX, which we're doing here in Moldova. So DTX, we have different partners. This is a, platform, a travel platform which I built. Chain Reactor is our partner with the private blockchain which we've been working on for one and a half years. Chainbytes develops payment systems, uh, land registrations and other areas. Assam University, um, the rector was so kind enough to actually create a division called the Blockchain Center, uh, which I'm the international director of. But this morning he told me, now you need to build us a bigger center than Techwell, because he wants the infrastructure, the resources. But the problem is this, I'm not building a building. I'm building a national infrastructure to support learning, e-learning, to support blockchain services, IOT. VGG, this is a uh, company for energy efficiency. So because we're focusing on IOT and industrial IOT, we need to also work with the businesses to help them reduce their energy output. So with VGG, we can finance uh, hardware, well, solar panels, hydro generators, and the businesses can receive 20 to 30% discount on their normal consumption, depending on what the price they're paying and how much they use. Liquid Marketing is my partner for many years, who's worked with me in Namibia, in Greece. He's most probably the only person who's able to decipher some of the ideas I come up with because of they're very crazy, but it's not because they're crazy, it's because I'm looking at a different way to implement this so people can use it. Because most of my work has been in areas where they don't have telecommunications. I've been asked several times by African countries from the Ministry of Education, can you please put internet into our school? Well, you can't make it profitable and subsidized to put that there. So you need to find new ways to actually subsidize this. And this is where the DTX comes in, by tokenizing telecommunications infrastructure. If you can do that, 
in rural areas, we can put the communications, we can put financial services, we can put e-learning services. So with NXT, this is a decentralized blockchain. It's been around since uh, 2013. It's been uh, very generous to me because most of the projects I've done with it, well, all of them, have been very successful. We struggled with many other blockchains, but with NXT, we were, we were devoting in 2015 at the banking event at Pay Expo, uh, where we were doing the best speaker, and we didn't even have an app. It was done via SMS. So somebody can SMS into a number, and that vote was registered onto the blockchain. In Namibia, we tried an experiment to do uh, 800,000 votes of the trade union workers. Problem is, 800,000 people trying to vote, and blockchains, decentralized blockchains cannot really handle that many transactions per second, so it doesn't work. Then with City Business Links, this is a UK company. Um, I've got them to come to work with Moldova. We've uh, set up Kishno City Link, Comrade City Link. And what we're doing is we're using, we're putting together to use the Amfino platform under the City Business Link to support small businesses. So it's another trial we're doing to work with IoT as well for what we're exporting elsewhere. But the idea is to enable using the blockchain for transparency underneath uh, the corporate identity, company identity uh, protection, the transactions, auditing, many, many things. But the important part is, it's why would somebody use it? Why would a small business want to use it? Well, many businesses, they have stock which sits there for some time. So how do we generate economic growth for them? How can we help their business grow? Well, in Switzerland, they created the Weir Bank. And that was back in the 60s, 70s, and it's still going now, where businesses made their own network. Then we have our partner in Africa, which we're also now in the process of exporting some of the ideas and implementations that we're going to do here in Moldova to Mauritius. So the first product we're exporting is Enfino. Bitland is a blockchain company which works with land registration, but for Africa. They've been very, very successful, and they're expanding f uh, from Ghana, Mauritius, Botswana, Nigeria. So the project of DTX isn't one person, one company. It's multiple people, multiple solutions, joining efforts to solve a problem, to make telecommunications infrastructure available to people, learning, e-learning, and financial inclusion but we're using a mixture of technologies. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Lee. Ну что, коллеги, на мой взгляд, три часа пролетели достаточно быстро, хоть вас стало меньше, но многие из вас остались. Я надеюсь, что мы подобрали презентации таким образом, что вы получили достаточно внимание, понимание, что это за проект, и сейчас можете формировать свое мнение, и, может быть, у вас возникнут какие-то идеи, связанные с блокчейн-проектами. Пожалуйста, вы можете обращаться к тем, кто выступал, к нам, и знаете, что мы сейчас достаточно серьезно будем вовлекаться в эту технологию и делать все возможное, чтобы в Молдове, так же, как в соседней Украине, эти проекты активно развивались и в государственной э, сфере, и в бизнесе, и в образовательной сфере. Спасибо всем за внимание.